Well, it's about 101 or 102, so yeah. I'd like to start our meeting. I was going to say, where's the flag? It's, it's yeah, right, right there. there. Okay. So, we'll all stand and salute the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We do not have anybody present to the open forum, so we are going to move right along. Um, Secretary's report, have you all had a chance to read it? Um, the only thing I I noticed, but I I don't think Alan that it is an error. The shredding day is off, should be October yeah. 24th. Not, not November. <laughs> yeah, we're 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 not shredding on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> Page four, October 24th. Yes, and. The other thing, and this isn't a mistake on Nancy's part by any means, but the Thanksgiving, I am not aware that the Congregational Church was asked to participate in the prize cookies at home. Um, the woman's club took that on. Oh, okay. That's fine. We gave the vegetables at the church yesterday. Yeah, I put in a call to Roberta so she could. Yeah. We will find fun for all of them. <laughs> Good. That's great. Are there any other comments? Yes, you, want, you want to change the date of the next meeting at the end? No, because that's what was uh, already. It changed after that. It got changed later, <laughs> after the meeting. Mm -hmm. So... Just a, just slight just, wording on that Thanksgiving, right after that uh, item that Linda just commented on. It says, on Tuesday, they will be delivering to you. It's not they. It's we. It's us. <laughs> Here. Senior Center is delivering. So it should be we are delivering. Okay, we will that. be delivering. It wasn't the way it sounded. So, we, so, it's a, so the Senior Center is going to be delivering. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow afternoon. Um, what's the, I said I have a lot to do between now and now. So you're doing the, the in-person meals? The KFC is the in-person um, and we're the, doing the delivery. The actual food is going to be here between 1230 and 1, 1 in that vicinity. And then so the delivery is set to go out at 2. My deliverers are we'll coming out at 2. At two? Two? Yeah. Okay. But we've only got 50, so we don't oh, have 100. We have 10 less. This, okay. We did 60 last year. I thought. Um, Can we do 70? 70. 70. 70. Yeah, I was going to say, there's, but, but there's 120 people going to the Knights of Columbus, so. Hmm. Okay. I have a 2 o'clock appointment tomorrow, so I'm just trying to. Okay, well, do what in. you can do. I'll give you the napkins. You can throw them on the bags and then you can leave. <laughs> Whatever. So I should start by what? 1230? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Or you can get the bags all set up on the tables. And <coughs> Yeah, and then we just bake, plop stuff in there. Yep. Dennis went to pick up the pies today. Guido and Bob We're are doing the ahead. condiments after. Yeah, we are. Okay. Sorry. So I'll put it as a senior center will be, will help deliver the meals? We are delivering the meals. Senior center will deliver the meals. Okay. <coughs> From here. Yes. <laughs> We've only got six minutes. We need, we need five eight. plus one because we only have ten members right now. Okay. I just so six is correct. So if one of you hadn't showed up, we wouldn't be here. Anyway. Okay. All right. May I have a motion to accept? I make a motion to accept the meeting, the minutes. That's my fight. Right. Yep. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Town bills and cash is H A C H E Y. So I think I asked him. Yeah. So it's eight with hashy. Let me go back to hashy. 
package that I just caught that. Okay. H A C H E Y. H A C H E Y. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah, because I asked Guido. No, that's right. I worked with a H and he spelled it. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I. Do. It's fine. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Well, you'll see that um, Nancy, Nancy and Stephanie, I guess, or Mary Ellen made this darker because the original copy I had was really light and I wasn't sure it was going to copy. So, but you can see that our repair and maintenance for the bus, we've already spent 80% of our budget. Yeah. And when we get to the 24 budget, I put extra money into that account this year because even if we order a bus now, we're like the, the fire department, the DPW, even if we order it now, it's going to be a year before we see it. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, we've already spent 80% of that, and most of it's been on repairs for the buses. The, the repairs that are going to happen, that are happening now, are not, they're covered by insurance, so that's not going to come out of this. Mm -hmm. But this was like brakes and tires and, you know, it all kind of... Mm -hmm getting the lift fixed and we still have to take <clears throat> we still have to take the big bus over to the place in um, Webster to have the the lift um, I don't know serviced tuned up or whatever mm -hmm. but we can't do that right now because that's the only bus we have so how are the windows coming for that other bus? one window is in they're waiting on the second one, and they were hoping it was going to be here by this week. So we might say a prayer, get um, the bus back next week. Mm -hmm. So that would make life easy. Um, the school has been very generous in letting us use their little vans. Um, we haven't had to use it but a couple times, but we definitely um, will be using it tomorrow because tomorrow is grocery shopping on top of everything else day. And um, so we will be using it tomorrow. And then I think they used it Friday, too, a couple other days, so. The uh, office supplies uh, budget is also way ahead of the normal uh, spending. Has anybody computer. bought computer printer ink lately? So, yeah, so yeah, are we going to be money. running out early in the year? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Expensive up a lot? Yeah, I mean, everything's more expensive, which I'm sure I don't have to explain that to right. any of you. Right. right. Um, the, the ink for the printers is ridiculous. And, you know, where Kristen does all of our posters and stuff and does such a good job these days, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's more. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Um, the and even the just the paper supplies. I mean, just the pens and pencils and that stuff's way more expensive than it used to be. So, um, I imagine most departments are probably experiencing the same issue. So, are they going to be doing a general thing, or are you going to have to go back and specifically ask for? Um, more well, money? I specifically and I can give you. I specifically asked for more money in the budget this year. Even just they wanted us. To, well, I'll, when we get to that, but. Yeah, that's one of but the other for this ones. Budget, that I, right here. For this one, um, I'm not sure how we're going to have to do that. Um, I, I, I don't know at this point um, how they're going to want us to do that. I mean, if we have to go back to the finance committee in the spring to ask for a couple thousand dollars, I don't have a problem with that mm. because we've been level funded forever. I never, we never ask for much. So um, I don't, you know. And they either give it to us or they don't, but um, but I think that I think that pretty much every department's kind of running into the same with their fixed costs that aren't so fixed anymore, like they were two years ago when we wrote this budget. So um, and there's not you know there's not a whole lot we could do about it. Right. So might have to dip in, dip into the town's full cash. Quote, unquote. Yeah, 
We're not going broke yet. So. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> and the fair helps. The fair helps. Yeah, and I mean, I, you know, we can have them help us with some stuff if we need it. So they gave us a large check for Christmas already. So I know we did, did well financially for the fair, but what about the um, the attendance? Was it as good as before? You know what? I think it probably was because. I know usually at 9 o'clock we have a huge rush of people, mm -hmm. but we didn't have, I mean, we had a bunch of people, but not as many, but by about 10, 15, 10, 30, the place was packed. Mm -hmm. So I think that either people were just slow getting moving that morning, yeah. which would be fine with me, um, yeah, or they, you know, whatever, they were out to do what, whatever, and that's what time they got here, so... Um, I mean, the, uh, the kitchen sold out of everything. They had no, I bought the last two clam chowders. No, clam chowder, the last two beef stews, I think. Um, so, I mean, that's a good thing. They they made money this year, so. Um, yeah, I don't know, but. Well, not a lot, but some. But I'm just saying, I mean, I'd rather sell out of stuff than have to figure out where to send stuff after the fact. There was very little baked goods left. There was, mm -hmm. I don't know about the knit and crochet table. Um, you know, the ra I mean, there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of raffle tickets that got sold. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of raffle tickets. And it was it was interesting, too, because there were new peop new names I didn't recognize that won raffles mm -hmm. this year, so that was a good thing. Um, like I said, I think, I mean, Dennis got most of the stuff that was outside was sold. Good. Mm -hmm. I mean, they took some stuff away, but not a lot so I mean I think all in all yeah exactly I think all in all that you know attendance was probably about the same but because yeah. I did notice after the fact the um, North Pole has the Melican school has a craft band they had the same day as us so I don't know if that drew people or if it just we we're just on their route I think I think that's mostly how people do it because yeah. I've you know I've heard people say that's like oh yeah I got this one this one I mean that's what Patty and I did on Saturday yeah. we went to three of them in the alpaca farm so yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> you know we kind of set did out you our buy an alpaca? no <laughs> <laughs> they're cute though yeah, they are cute, I know it was but... busy in jewelry we were busy yeah you guys mm. you guys sold a lot of stuff I was I didn't get the final count though I I don't have it <laughs> I don't have I. I got a preliminary thing from her at the beginning, but then she was still doing expenses and whatever, so I expect probably another week or so and she'll have it all. Plus I have, I, we have a bunch of envelopes that came in again, so, mm -hmm. and I don't, some of them were donations for Marie, some of them are dues, and some of them are donations for the fair, so. Mm -hmm. And then the silent auction finally settled up, so all that stuff now she has too. She got all that at the end of the week and, Good. so. I did hear that one of the rings that was donated by the jeweler was stolen. Stolen? And it happened probably after the fair but was officially closed. Mm. I find that very hard to believe because that, I had those. Yeah. So where did they go? The seven of them? No, there were only no, five. There were only five. Okay, the five of three was sold. But one box is was empty. No, it was not. I saw them. We, then it got then it got empty after. No, we'll talk okay, about that later. Okay, that's fine. I, oh, that's, I, no. I'd rather hear that. I know three out of five was sold. Yeah. So the other two were put away. Uh, kind of. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, that's that, that's good news. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Well, hmm. shall we move on to all business? Hmm. Um, I am. I am. I am to announce live, <laughs> live on camera. Um, if you have not returned your survey, you still can do so. Um, please do so as soon as possible. If you didn't get one or if you've lost it, we have some here that we're, we'll be happy to get to you. Um, I'm, I'm hoping you all filled yours yes. out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Um, Same day. And good. And um, like I said, we've got some here if people need them. If you didn't get one or if you lost it, we'll be happy to take care of it. But 
please fill it out because it is important. And the response has been pretty good at this point. I was say, do you have any input on how many they've received so far? Yeah, but I'm sworn to secrecy right now. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, fair enough. Okay. But a goodly amount of time. Yes, right. yes. Okay. Are they pleased with the results so far? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, but we can always use more. Yeah, mm -hmm. but just the, the, the turn on the industry. Yes. Returns are good. That's great. Yes, yeah. they did a um, focus group with Tammy's group last Thursday. Um, and then Holly stayed afterwards and helped with the program. She enjoyed it, I guess. And um, they did another focus group that Thursday morning down at the bottom of the hill for housing people. I don't know how that went, but. When you say focus group, what does that mean? Like the groups that they did here before the survey went out. So they're still doing. Yeah, I was surprised. They're going to do another one for caregivers and another one for people aged 45 to 60. But that's going to happen after Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. That had nothing to do with actually filling out the. Uh, no, 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 no. Or anything. No. Oh, okay. More collection. Yeah, huh? more data. Mm -hmm. So we'll take it. I have noticed each time I go out and park in a parking lot, I come out and two or three times right here, there's a blue notice about the upcoming town meeting. Yes, let's not yes. discuss but, that. That's, okay. We won't, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it's yes. a problem. Anyway, um, so the minibuses, um, I don't, I think this happened after our last meeting. Um, one of our drivers had a little accident with the other small bus. Um, completely, complete accident, and I, I get it. I would have probably done the same thing. He um, hit the overhang at the bank, a video bank. Um, there was one lady in the bus. Nobody was hurt. Um, it was all good, but there was a hole in the roof. So that bus is up at um, Worcester Truck. Um, and um, I found out when I was here on Thursday that the insurance adjuster hadn't even been there yet, so I put in a quick call to Kim and she was going to make that. I said, Kim, it's, it could have been fixed by now. It's been up there for three weeks. So um, she was going to take care of that. Um, and then, um, like I said, the other one, one of the pieces of glass is in, the other one they're waiting on, but they're hoping it's going to be here this week. Mm -hmm which will be good because then we can have our other bus back. And um, our 12 passenger bus is doing double duty every day because... <laughs> well, I saw two buses out there this morning. The Highlands bus was out there. Oh, was Kevin crazy. came and had lunch with his brother. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, we're. I mean, you know what? And I have to say, the drivers have been wonderful. They're making it work. And... Um, and people have been pretty good about, you know, it's like, well, mm -hmm. hey, you know, we've only got one bus, so you've got to, you know, be patient. And, you know, there's always a couple that aren't, mm -hmm. but most of them are just, they understand, they're happy that they have the bus and that they can mm -hmm. get to where they need to go and get home, so. Um, well, the buses run on Thanksgiving Day? Yes. David is, I believe David's going to drive on Thanksgiving Day. We have about... Well, maybe that he rides to the next So It's only for the Thanksgiving dinner? Yes. Or of other trips? To no, no, just, just for, for Thanksgiving that. dinner. There's, nobody's going anyplace else. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So. That's the thing. Oh, I just want to mention on the on the old business. Yeah. Um, I went to the veterans lunch, right, which yes. was terrific. But I was surprised how few veterans were there compared to. It's like a serious drop off from earlier years. I think that maybe I took count of 15 veterans. We um. Compared, is that, is that we the, lost a lot during COVID. You mean died? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. And the other thing along um, those lines were, on Veterans Day, the number of people that attended. The final event at the municipal building, it was like 10 people. And I went, I remember, you know, go, go, let's say go back five years, it'd be 500 people. 
So we've uh, gone from 500 to 10. I think and, you're thinking of Memorial Day. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm thinking of Veterans Day because I remember uh, going on Veterans Day and I had my Navy ship cap on and I saw another guy that I'd never met before from my uh, same ship at different years. And it, it was, I mean, the number of people that, that were participating in presenting mm -hmm. were more than the audience. Wow. And I just said, this, I just I thought, I'd, you know, no. it's the only meeting I attend, so I thought I'd bring it up and just mention it. I in, think in that passing. it bothers me because back in the dark ages, like my mother always said, I mean, everything was closed on Veterans Day and you didn't, mm -hmm. you know, you, everything was closed. Uh, yeah, and yeah. People did these things, and there were big parades and all that. And now it just another just day it that way. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so um, it's unfortunate, but well, I'm still here. Yes, well, you are. Well, that's good. We're happy <laughs> about that. Yeah. I thought the lunch in here at the senior center was oh, very delicious. It was good, and the music. The music was very lovely. Nancy she did a great left, job. She, she shut it down though before we sang all 743 songs. Oh! <laughs> oh, that was for that was for Kindness Friday. Yes. Well, I, I have no control over that. I wasn't here. I can't. Oh, the one shot. No, I gave you three of them. Okay. All right, so. Guido, has he come? No, Bobby. No, he's just waiting for Guido to get done. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Guido, that's all. Okay. And unless you want me to go, I'll go. No, it's no. fine. No, no, no. Okay. No. no. <laughs> um, okay, so it was. <laughs> It's time for the FY24 budget, believe it or not, which was submitted, which was submitted before I left on vacation. Um, as you and I'll explain what I'm doing with the salary and wages piece. Um, so I did from what we got in FY23, just for the expense part of it, was twenty six six thousand two hundred, and what I've asked for this year is twenty nine thousand one hundred twenty five. And you can see that um, I put in more for office supplies, and I put in more for repair of, and maintenance of the equipment, and I put in a little bit more for um, events and special events and programs. Um, so, because we've asked in the past to increase the number of hours for some of our positions, and we were denied because everybody was last year, so. Because they did the 2020 census and the results were um, were out this year, um, our formula grant, which we get from the state every year, um, this year we're getting $55,716, which is a whole lot more money than we've ever gotten because we have 4,643 people over the age of 60 in Westboro. How many? 4,643. Um, and that's $12 a piece that we get from the state in this grant. So because we are not paying for a nurse, because Jim's coming through the co-op thing with the Board of Health, and because we haven't replaced the outreach aid that Mary Ellen was prior to this, we have all this money. And I had asked about a part-time custodian, but that got vetoed. So what I did was I put together a proposal that we would use the extra money all written down here. We would use thirty-three thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars, and with that, we would add five hours for Kristen, which makes her forty hours a week. Which she's already working probably fifty hours a week, but she's mm -hmm. you know. Um, Stephanie would also get five more hours, which she's also working and not getting paid for anyway. Um, then I would add two more hours for Sharon to make it up to 18, I mean, yeah, up to 18 hours from 16. The reason I, the reason I need to do that, so you all knew that Bay Path merged with Springwell and all of that. Well, so far we've gotten that much service from anybody. Um, and rumor has it on good authority that the waiting list for homemaker services right now is almost a year. 
So Sharon and I, Sharon, Stephanie, and I have talked. Um, what we're going to try to do is sort of maximize Sharon's hours. So she's got several clients at Rogers Road, several at B Street, and several over at Mayberry. And what we're going to try to do is like cluster them. So she maybe spends four hours there, but does three or four people in that for like if she's doing somebody's laundry she's doing somebody else's vacuuming that kind of thing so we can kind of maximize her time because some I mean some of them are only every other week anyway so which is fine especially mm -hmm. in the little apartments um, so we're going to work on doing that um, at for after the holidays and then um, then we'd have a you know a couple more hours because I don't see the need going away but I see mm -hmm waiting a year to get a homemaker is kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember calling down to Tennessee to help my aunt and uncle out, and I was told then there was a year to wait for Meals on Wheels, and I was like appalled. And now we're, and there have been waiting lists in the past, but it's never been as bad as this. And part of it is the labor, it's the labor shortage, it's not mm -hmm. anything else. Mm -hmm. So um, to try to, like I said, maximize some of Sharon's time. Um, I've added four hours for Tammy, so she'll be working 10 hours a week instead of six because she certainly works way more than six hours a week. Mm -hmm. And then looking at the number of requests that Mike gets for hit handyman service, um, he had 18 calls last Wednesday on the book. Wow. Yeah, and, and it's pretty much like that a lot. So I've added an extra day for him. So he'll be working two days a week. He'll be working 16 hours instead of eight. So all of that put together came out to $33,950, which still leaves us with $21,766 to do other things with that formula grant with. And since we're not paying for the nurse or the outreach aid, we got to do something with it. So. so now I have to fill out a form. Actually, I have to fill out five forms um, for that request, even though um, it's not actually town money. I don't know I, if they explained it to me, but anyway, so I have to do that. But um, that that's my plan, and that way we get the additional staffing that we need. Because I'll tell you what, the phone started ringing at 9:01 this morning, and it hasn't stopped all day. <laughs> at one point, Mary Ellen, Stephanie, and I are all on the phone, and it's like there's nobody to answer the other one. So, um, but, but yeah. nothing for custodian, extra custodian. Nope. No, nope. they wouldn't now, let me do that. So they don't think we need it. Or, or no, uh, no, apparently not. So I, I, I don't know what the answer to that question is ever going to be. It needs to be raised somewhere because it's, you know, Wayne does a great job, but he's not here enough to do a really good job. So exactly. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know whether or not the, the, my increases will be, um, I, I explained to them that part of it is, you know, expense, and part of it is that we want to continue to be able to not price people out of being able to participate mm -hmm. or come for the dinners or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I was asked if we were kind of, if we intended to keep going with the um, grab and go lunch and the dinner at the back door, and I said and for the foreseeable future, yeah, because with prices of everything the way it is, this is a great mm -hmm. help, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of those dinners are two meals and whatever, mm -hmm. and I, I, you know, people seem to enjoy it, and mm -hmm. they are used to it, and with winter coming, so, I mean, maybe we'll worth thinking again, but I think we had 65 roast beef sandwiches last Wednesday. Mm. I guess everybody likes roast beef. <laughs> and we got 40 some today. What? Well, I was going to say that there was an article in this last weekend's uh, Community Advocate about a, I guess it, at first I thought it was the senior center, but it's not. It's a nonprofit group in Northborough that's getting ARPA funds yeah. for doing something like our dinner at the back door, but they do it every Wednesday at no cost. Uh -huh. to, to the people that are coming. Uh -huh. And they're getting like $15,000 of ARPA funds yep. for that. And we may well, you know, I I guess I just have to say that, you know, Bob, Bob asked me the other day about community dinners. We may end up going back to those at some point. Um, 
I, you know, I, I wish I had a crystal ball. They keep talking recession. They keep talking this. They keep talking that. They keep talking about $8 a gallon for home heating oil and all this stuff. And that's really going to crunch people. So uh, we may have to come up with, um, you know, something else that we need to do to help some folks out with some of this because, you know, I, I can't abide hungry children and hungry seniors. So. Mm -hmm. Those are my those are my two biggest issues. So, well, that and homeless people, but that's a whole other, that's further down the agenda. So anyway, so that's the budget as it's gone to the town right now. Um, I'll let you know as we move through this process. They have to present the final budget to the selectmen. I think on December twenty first. Yeah, um, it has it has to go to the selectmen sometime in December. I'm not sure the date. I don't remember. Um, but anyway, so that's that. Anyway, so some good news. Our holiday party is going to be on December the 13th. And the Westboro High School Chamber Singers will be here for to entertain us. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was contacted by the music teacher. And she said, would you like us to come sing for something? And I said, oh, would I? <laughs> so they'll be here for, prop, for like half an hour or so, so mm -hmm. at around 1, between 1 and 1 to, I mean, going to get here as quick close to one as they can. Mm -hmm. So I figure by the time we all eat and do all the stuff, we'll mm -hmm. be, um, yeah. That's so wonderful. And on Wednesday evening, December 21st at 6.30 p.m., the Worcester Men of Song will be here to sing to us. Mm -hmm. They've put together a lovely holiday program. Um, they're very excited because they reached out to several different places and I'm the only one that said yes, absolutely. Wow. Um, wow. So they're going to be here to sing to us that night. And we'll, we will put the bus on the road, um, but and it will be free and open to the public. I'll, we'll get some cookies if we want to mm -hmm. bake. Or, I'm okay. sorry, what's the date again? Please? The 21st. Thank you. And then for people who had asked about it, um, on the 6th of December, um, the fire department will be offering the CPR class here for anybody who wants to take it. We talked about, they were asked about that at the um, August at the cookout. And um, Chris Weinworm, who's the one that was the instructor, he had some knee surgery, so, but he's back, back working. Um, and he's going to do that class. It'll be $25, which is a considerable discount from what... Mm -hmm. But you'll you'll have a certification. It won't just be a see this is how we do it class. It'll mm -hmm. be a real class. So um, if anybody wants to sign up, what time again, please? Huh? The one that never got updated from two years ago. What? The CPR class. That was the one you were gonna do another one that I never did. Never heard oh, of. you didn't come for the one I who did. Come, you were gonna, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Let me because I think it's you and Brad. Let me yeah. see if I can have, have you both do that, and he can bill me for those, like everybody else. But yeah, I would say sign up for it, Nancy, okay. and I'll take care of it. What time uh, is this going to be? One o'clock. One o'clock. Would that include the use of the defibrillator mm -hmm. out here? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Hmm. And then, um, like I said, our New Year's Eve Eve party which is already, people are already getting excited about that. We will do dinner at the back door. We'll have two grab-and-goes, um, birthday lunch, the usual things. I'm trying to be, um, I'm trying to be very careful of the staff because I really, like, I can't ask anybody to do any more at this point there. And I have to say that Stephanie and Mary Ellen did an outstanding job last week, and Donna Kittredge came in and helped with the phones. They really did a great job last week holding down the fort. And we got a few, I'm sorry to bother you, text messages, which I think was fine. I didn't care. It was a, a big deal. 
stuff. You still have the council members. I know. Set you know. Tables and, and, and after the moment. next Council on Aging meeting, that's exactly what you're going to be doing for the holiday party the next day. So <laughs> don't make any plans for the afternoon of December 12th because you'll be setting tables. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. That's good to know. Oh, by the way. <laughs> Um, we'll also be starting line dancing on December 1st. We have a new teacher and Rummy Cube, which is a tile game. It's kind of similar to Mahjong, only I think it's easier. I'm not sure. Um, I actually found a brand new game. I was asked. This came out of the um, Westbrook Connects thing they did in September at the high school. And so a bunch of people were interested. So um, they, I have an instructor and everything and I was going through some stuff in my house and I had a brand new game that's never ever been opened and it's now in my office and one more thing out of my house <laughs> so that'll be starting um, Tammy's got two um, things she had a big group here last Thursday for her um, program and we're already looking at Chinese New Year which will be the end of January I think January 24th we'll be celebrating Chinese New Year um, my support group, the um, support group for care, dementia caregivers um, has expanded by three new members in the last few weeks. Um, and we're going to have a little breakfast here um, for their meeting on the 15th. Um, and they'll be, they can bring their people they're caring for with them if they'd like. We're happy to do that. So, And um, we will be closed on December 26th, which will be... The observed holiday because Christmas is on Sunday and I personally love when that happens <laughs> Amen. to get up and come to work the day after Christmas is like oh yeah <laughs> that's so. a big breakfast what again In my group you have council members I, I, I am aware I am mm -hmm. aware I would love to be able to send, so there's um, a couple groups, I believe, from Westboro High School that are going to be singing at the Brown Bag Lunch at Mechanics Hall on the 14th, and I would love, if we get our other bus back next week, I'm going to try to do that, but with one bus, I can't, you know, but I'd love to be able to send a bus up so people can see the kids, yeah. so. It's a beautiful hall. Huh? It's a beautiful yes, Oh, and we've gone up there before. Nancy's spearheaded that a few yeah. times, and we've gone up a few times for that brown bag lunch, and it's great. It is. Um, I have two sets of prom pictures from Mechanics Hall from Jack. <laughs> so it's lovely on that staircase with the pictures. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, but like I said, if I don't have another bus, I really can't. Okay, so we won't get too excited about it yet. No, we'll just no. But hopefully, if I find out right after Thanksgiving, I will definitely, will definitely do that. This will be January or no, December fourteenth. December fourteenth of the candle store. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But people are welcome to go themselves if they want to go up and do that. Um, and then just a shout out to the kids. Um, we had a bunch of kids from Westboro High School Student Council and the National Honor Society and uh, I believe one of the churches were, have been raking leaves for the last couple weekends and um, have just done a tremendous job. Um, the good thing is they've had good weather to do it in. It hasn't snowed. Um, it hasn't been raining. A couple of years ago we had to, like all bets were off because we got an ice storm the weekend they were supposed to be doing the leaves so that was the end of that um, but they really um, have done a great job I've heard from a few people I says Stephanie she coordinated it and she um, um, like I said people were just really happy that because like nobody's leaves fell down and then all of a sudden they did all one day mm -hmm. so um, what's the criteria for signing up for them ask Stephanie, ask Stephanie. or me or whatever yeah <laughs> Actually, she was looking for lawns there at the end of the week because she oh. had so many people that wanted oh. to help. So I got leads for her. Well, talk to her before you leave. I don't know what she's got left for slots, whether they're going to be doing more this weekend or not. So. I don't know if you had to be a certain age, like over 80 or something. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten there yet. <coughs> I don't know. 
that. No. That's, that, if you're over 60, you're a senior citizen. And okay. You're entitled to everything we, we have. Um, the other thing is we're starting to gear up for our Christmas present, our holiday presents program. Um, Stephanie's already got um, one of the dancing schools in town contacted her, and they're already willing to buy 60 gifts for us, wow. which is awesome. Wow. Um, our list has grown this year. Um, we um, got a, a nice check from the supporters um, to help with gift cards and stuff. So um, she's putting it all together. We'll be ordering flowers next week because um, we usually do about 250 to 300 gifts and then we do another five or six dozen plants or some kind of flowers that go like to the nursing home. and. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's um, going to be busy. We might need you to order, deliver some presents as we go along. We talked about it a lot in the office, and we decided that this year we really would like to do more presents than gift cards. Gift cards are kind of, mm -hmm. you know, but a nice new set of sheets or some new towels or a new bathrobe, that's a nice present. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. That's what we're going to be doing this year. So we might need you to come wrap. Does anybody wrap? I wrap. You wrap? Oh, yay. Wrap. Oh, you do? My yeah. Wrapper. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we might get you in here. Yeah, we might do yeah, a wrapping let, day. Just let mm -hmm. me know. Yeah. Please. And then just to give you a little bit of a heads up, on January 3rd, which is the day we come back after the um, New Year's holiday, we're cleaning this place. Because at that point, we will need to haul stuff out of closets and boxes and throw stuff away and so we decided we need, we're going to need a cleaning day so and it's much easier to clean without people underfoot than that's yeah okay. so. that? January 3rd yep. unless it's snowing <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. so. Good idea. what day is that Tuesday Tuesday I think as long as we're already going to be closed a few days anyway it's right after the holiday we might as well just get it done and mm -hmm. I told Wayne bring a big volunteer truck. Volunteer custodians. Volunteer custodians, yes. Yes. Good. So there's a lot of boxes floating around that need dispensing with. So so we're gonna be busy but we'll take a yeah. breath in January. Is the Christmas party luncheon going to be cave? Yes. Our usual roast beef, mashed potatoes, green beans, and salad, mm -hmm. cupcakes. Sounds good. Yeah. All I those cupcakes they had at the fair, those old ones. The ones that Guido's wife made? Oh. Yes. Yeah, they were pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, the ones I bought <laughs> never made it out of the building. So, mm -hmm. But I didn't have lunch either, so that was my... I had a pink cupcake for lunch. Oh. <laughs> So thank you, Guido's wife. <laughs> yes, I will tell her. Yes, please do. <laughs> um, there will be a, a clinic tomorrow from 10 to 1, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. If you want a the, the next Moderna shot, this is not <laughs> this is not booster shot one or two. This is the next the next Omicron. It's got a fancy name. Jim says it all the time. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, tomorrow, if you need to get a shot or want to get one tomorrow, register with Stephanie before you leave. Um, he's got a limited number of shots. I don't think we've hit that many yet, but um, by all means, get yourself signed up. Get protected. Um, we already talked about the CPR classes. Um, Nancy, are you going to be available to help tomorrow? No, unfortunately okay. I'm not. Okay. I have an appointment. That's fine. I wish that was, but I'm sorry I can't. Okay. okay. I will be here. Okay. And it's just signing yeah. people in. Are it's you very available easy. tomorrow? Or? Yeah, I don't have anything tomorrow, but I know it. What time? Ten, Ten to, to one. one. Ten to one. Oh, so, what are we doing the bags? Oh, thank 
Okay. Oh, you, the, the, the shots will be in here. Okay. Shots will be in here. Bags will be out there. Because we need space. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. So. Thank you, Nancy. Appreciate that. Um, Before you go, Pat, do you understand which booster this is all about? Because I thought I was current and that you, you, you dropped a, another word. This is the Omicron boost. This was the one. Like, you should have already had. If you've your, had all of them, this would be the fourth. This would be the fourth yeah. shot if you've had all of them. No, I already had the fourth one. Well, oh, then you don't three, need another one. I had three, three in the spring. The main, two main ones. Yeah. And I had two boosters. Then you don't um, need another one. That's what I was trying to Yeah. 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 This and was the fourth one. Fourth one, I got to do that. Yeah. And because they didn't have room on the card. That's how I remember. Right. Yeah. I know, because they didn't write it in the right places to begin with. It made a mess. I hate that. That drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. well, um, we also have flu shots. Yes, yeah. but that was on, that was last week. Yeah, there's no flu shots. And on. last week he had the Pfizer shot, but most people wanted the Moderna shot because that's the one that we had started with. Like, I'm the same way. I, I took the Moderna shot. I didn't have reactions to it at all, so I'm going to stick with that it's one. It's called buying local. Well... <laughs> He, well, I, there were a bunch of people that got the Pfizer shot last week, but... Well, last week I did. Um, I had gotten the Moderna before, but then I really wanted to make sure I got it. And fortunately, it was wonderful because Jim came to my house and gave my husband... That's <laughs> all right. Um, anyways, um, and I had no reaction to the Pfizer. That same here. I, I had three Modernas and, and the one Pfizer last week, no problems at all. Yeah, I mean, I probably would be okay, but I don't do well with shots anyway. I mean, when I got my tetanus shot, my arms, so I looked like one of those guys on the field yesterday. It was awful, but um, so I, I just, like I said, I've had the Moderna shots, and it hasn't bothered me at all, so I'm going to stick with it, because with my luck, I'd get the Pfizer one, and I'd be sick for a week, and you got for so. But I think, you know, it is an option. We, we may do another one. It just depends on when they have access to the, to the uh, serum. But it's tomorrow if you're interested, so. Well, I could, I could get them. See, I had the first two and then the one booster of the Moderna. But then I got COVID, and they put me on the antibiotic that medicine. And now they're saying And now they say I have to wait three months before I get the second booster. Oh. That's what I've been told. Yeah, that's why I didn't have my second booster until the end of April because I had had COVID in December. And yeah, I just didn't and I had it in July. July, they, yeah. August, September. But then I, but they put me on the medicine too. You should be okay. So though. they said I have to wait until maybe probably the middle of January. Really? Yeah. That yeah. long? Huh. To get this the second. So you had the antibody things, the monochrome? Mono, or locks, or polo, polo locks, or something. Whatever or whatever. That. Yeah, I had to take it for five days. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. I, I I don't know, it changes every day. I was listening yeah. to stuff this morning on NPR and they were talking about stuff again. I'm like, now what? So, okay. Um, so it's, I, I just want to make you aware of this. There's not, I don't know. We are aware in the office of probably six, yeah, six, senior citizens who are residing in town but are homeless, which they're either living in their cars, their van, or a tent. Um, I am really concerned, we all, I shouldn't just say me, we are all very concerned, um, especially since it was, you know, 21 degrees last night at mm -hmm. 8 o'clock. Um, we have been helping them as best we can with like grab and go lunches and that kind of stuff but the thing is that they don't have anywhere to cook anything so it's not like i can send them home with a, a backdoor meal because they come cold to be heated so it's we're so we're, we've done the best we could stephanie's been pretty good about checking in with people the police are involved with a couple of these situations um, you know, my concern is that there's, there's nowhere to put them. Um, the, the list for that, so if you apply for elderly housing right now, like Rogers Road or Mayberry, 
you go into a big, huge statewide waiting list. Emergencies are no longer homelessness necessarily or, or on the verge of being evicted. Um, I happened to be in Linda's office one day and she pulled up the first eight people on the list that she could offer apartments to. They were all from, one was from Springfield, but most of them were from Dorchester, Jamaica Plain, like, and they're not going to want to move out here. No. Then apparently there was a fire in Lemonster in the housing, one of the housing buildings in Lemonster um, a couple months ago, and they were told to, um, to put, not put anybody to make sure all the people from that fire had already been placed in housing. So she's got some empty apartments downstate, downtown, you know, down at the bottom of the hill and over at Mayberry, but she can't put anybody in it yet. So frustrating because one of the other things that's precipitated some of the evictions and some of that stress is that during that big housing bubble there when property was selling for big bucks, some of these landlords sold their houses that people had lived in, in their apartments for 20, 30 years or more. Um, and then the new landlord comes in and he wants to make his money back, so he's doubled and sometimes tripled the rent. Um, I've talked with the veterans agent about the same situation. He has this in all the surrounding towns. Um, you know, veterans that have lived in their apartments for years and years and years, and now all of a sudden their rent is more than their Social Security check. And where are they going to go? So um, I'm concerned because I don't like the fact that these people are sleeping outside mm -hmm. in this cold weather. I don't care whether you have a 32 below zero sleeping bag or not, it's cold. Um, my concern is that unfortunately somebody's going to die. And then everybody's going to be screaming, why didn't, why didn't we do something? Well, tell me what to do and I'll do it. I will happily do it. Um, we've talked about a few, so, I mean, this is something that we've talked with the police about, we've talked with the Board of Health about. I mean, we just don't have a solution to the problem. And um, I have also spoken to our new senator's um, office about doing something about this wait list so that people can take housing authorities can take people from their own towns if they're facing eviction or they've been evicted. Mm -hmm. If they've got empty apartments, they don't have to wait. I mean, we have a woman right now who's, her emergency, she's number 49 on the emergency list. Um, and there's only so, you know, there's, oh, there are a couple programs that help, but they're stretched pretty thin right now too. So um, the extended stay hotels mm -hmm. up there, they're filled with people that, welfare is put up there. Um, I, it's like, I don't understand why our current governor, who won't be governor much longer, didn't has not put money into building more low-income mm -hmm. elderly housing. It just frustrates me beyond words. I actually wrote him a letter. Um, so I'm going to meet with, there's a program that's run out of one of the churches in um, um, Whitensville. And I've already called the lady, and I'm going to, they haven't started opening up yet, but one of the churches has a room that they let people sleep in, um, and it's manned by volunteers. And I'm going to, I've got a meeting, um, thanks to Betsy, <laughs> um, in January with the clergy to see if there's something we can do, but it's not until January 12th. Um, something maybe they can, if one of the churches or whatever, um, I, I just, I don't know, I, it scares me, and I think about this at night when I'm sleeping in my warm bed, and I know that there's this lovely couple, and he's a veteran, and they're sleeping in their van somewhere here, um, and you know, this lady is sleeping in her tent out in the woods, and I, it just, it, I, I don't know, I, I don't even have words, it just gets me upset. So you contacted other churches? Mm -hmm. Is that the last I knew, St. Luke's left their church open. They do open leave their like church open. Yeah. 24-7. They do. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to see if we can somehow formalize that so that... Because um, I know the church... And yeah, I know sleep. the church over in Whitensville. They've been doing this now for a couple years, and it works out pretty well. I, the, girl who, the girl who's actually the 
secretary at that church, I know her, and we've talked about it. And she said, yeah, I'll put you in touch with her. She, you know, I said, well, tell her, you know, she can get in touch with me after Thanksgiving. But, um, you know, she said it works out pretty well. And they usually have anywhere between, depending on how cold it is, between 10 and 20 people. Um, and they do have volunteers that, you know, are there overnight in case there's a problem and whatever. And I, and I don't, I mean, I worked in a homeless shelter for 13 years. I didn't have a lot of problems. I had attitude from some of them, but not problems. So, I mean, I think people, to not have to sleep outside on a night when it's 21 degrees is a blessing. Have all the churches in town been notified of this problem? so they can step up and find a room? Well, I've talked to a couple ministers that I've run into, and like I said, they don't, the Ecumenical Council doesn't meet, again, they don't meet in December because it's kind of busy, so, but they meet in January, so I, I'm going to that meeting to talk to them about this, and by then I'll have some more information about how this is run in Whitensville and how they've, how they've managed with it. But, and I've even called some of the shelters that we, I mean, People went to hotels, then they opened the residential um, shelters, which is where I worked in Milford, and then they started closing the residential <coughs> shelters and they're putting people back in the hotels. It's like, <sighs> make up your mind. Mm -hmm. the, structure that, the structure in the residential shelters was so much better for so many of them. Mm -hmm. And they're in hotels, they're in a room with their kids, and that's, they're in a room. You know, I, I think that they need to open the residential shelters again because mm -hmm. this hotel thing isn't working real well. But I've called a couple of them that I'm aware of, and <coughs> they're full. They're already full. So. <coughs> but anyway, just so you're aware. Give me your keys. Um, can we get that lady from the tent to go to St. Luke's at least at night and stay in there? Boy, would that make me happy. I, 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 one of the police officers has been working with her and we, you know, he's aware of all the options to tell her, but I don't, I, I haven't talked to him in a couple of weeks, so I don't know if her situation has changed, but hmm. it's just sad. This, uh, this, you know, and, and people, you know, I've had people say to me over the years, oh, you work in Westboro, that's a wealthy town, they don't have problems there, and I go, oh, you only knew. Can I tell you about some of the houses I've been in in the last 39 years? Yeah, yeah. yeah. believe me, we have the same kind of problems anybody else has. So. Yeah. The food pantry is very busy. Food pantry is very, very busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the problem is if you have no place to cook, or, you know, you, mm -hmm. nothing, you, you know, I mean, people that are utilizing the food pantry. Oh no, I know that, but I'm just saying we've we've offered that you to wouldn't, people. You wouldn't and expect some people that take advantage of that go there. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah, no. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Has the housing authority here in town been informed of they? Oh yeah, Linda mm -hmm. and I have talked about this several times. She, you know, unfortunately she can only do what they let her do. And, but I'm hoping that once our new senator gets on board that we can get this whole waiting list thing, like get rid of that whole thing. Because people should, you know, a couple of these people that we've helped fill out applications for, they don't want to move to Springfield. They don't want to move to, you know? Um, they should be able to find some place in Westboro for them. It, right. Or they even even if it's Grafton or Shrewsbury, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and if you say no, I don't want to move to Springfield, you go to the bottom of the list again. Oh. And it's like, that's not really fair. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a mess. The housing situation all across the country is a mess, but this is... Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about the other 49 states. I just have to worry about this one. So, but like I said, it's just so you're aware that this is going on, and you know, I might have to make a few waves. So, um, but at least our new state senator is aware of this because.
she said wait, she's I'm not the only person she's heard from about this whole waiting list thing. So. So. Other than that, <laughs> I really do have gray hair under here, I promise I do. <laughs> you know, I, the Congregational Church, we're taking dinners to two different places at night in Worcester. Mm -hmm. I, I wish we could do more. I know. I, I mean, and I get there's only so much any group can do, but we need something. We got to do something. I can't. Uh, I don't know. I I just I hold my breath at night, and the colder it gets. I mean, it was great when it was 85 degrees two weeks ago, mm -hmm. but not anymore. I mean, what night did it snow? Wednesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday mm -hmm. night. I was so surprised when I looked out the window and saw it snowing. Snow snow <laughs> yeah, but it was pretty for about three minutes. <laughs> it was. Uh. So, anyway, so other than that, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Enjoy your holiday with your family and friends or whoever, and um, we'll see you until we also see you tomorrow. Before yes, we, some of us will see me tomorrow. Before we close the meeting. I'm going to ask Guido. Guido and I had a conversation after the friendship luncheon here mm -hmm. about getting another projector screen. And at that point, Guido, could I ask? Yeah, we. Me? I will go find the information because we found one on Amazon that we could that we figured Wayne and I looked at it and he f measured and figured it would go inside that um, skylight that's up there that doesn't have a skylight anymore because there's a roof over it now so I'll investigate that and find out yeah I think it has to be on this side yeah of the divider yeah the skylights on the other side I think all right but well, we did right, find one we, we just happened to have, you know, the, the breakfast with the chief. Mm -hmm. They came and wanted to do a presentation for us. We got our dinky little screen, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, it was awful. I mean, it, it's just not not appropriate when we're doing these half room yeah. presentations. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you know, we weren't going to move all the tables down to the other end, which mm -hmm. would have been the alternative, is to move all the tables and have our our dinners, you know, our small dinners down at that end of the table uh, at that end of the room. But we've talked about it in the past, and that's what I was telling Linda, we uh, found something that might fit, but it had to, I thought the problem was hanging it uh, on the divider, uh, on this side of the divider, so that we could it pull it down. It shouldn't be, actually, because there's, but we'd have to look and see where the, where the metal goes in the ceiling. I, I, I think above. A good, uh, you know, carpenter could probably figure it out. Yeah, it. because we, that's what we had to do when we divided the room with the curtain. We had to put that, um, what do they call that, that the curtain runs through. Um, they had to, that's where they, they put it where that was because there was metal, under, right. you know, up above it. So, yeah, we can do that. I think the supporters had actually voted to purchase that for us back a while ago. So no, that might be a good recommendation for some of the okay. men. All right. All right. I'll see if I can find that one that we had looked at. So yeah. when's our next meeting? December twelfth. December twelfth? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's when you have to stay after school. I'm sorry? <laughs> you have to stay after to help with tables and stuff for the next day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what is what is the, the procedure with respect to posting meetings on the town calendar? 48 hours prior to the meeting, Saturday counts, Sunday doesn't. No, I, you're, you're, you're answering half the question that I really didn't mean to ask. Okay, <laughs> then why well, did you ask? <laughs> no, I'm asking about the other end. Why is it the meeting right now this afternoon for the 12th of December posted? Why does it, why is it wait, why do you wait, or whoever does it, until it's almost too late? This month is an example. I was away, 
and I wanted to make sure that I had my calendar straight about today's meeting. Yep. Uh, Linda told me about it, about this meeting in the hallway after something else, uh, but I never saw any other information. There was no, nobody sent me an email, and there was nothing posted until about two hours before it would have been too late. Because we would have well, I, I don't understand why it's done at the last. The meeting was posted first thing Thursday morning when yes. I came in here. But um, because the agenda and the meeting have to be posted together. That's the issue. That's what part of the issue so is. So the issue was the delay in getting the agenda together? Well, I don't, I mean, the agenda, I don't, I can't begin to tell you what might be on the agenda for December right this minute. No, but I've seen many committees post a sort of a, a template agenda that's you know says continuing old business and then continuing new business and that's all the agenda that's posted says and then when we get here we get a paper copy of something with more detail i'm just concerned that somehow it's getting cut it got cut too close a couple of weeks back or a month back and i was wondering it was going to happen again because i didn't see it until thursday which meant that was about as late as you could possibly do it and that's my, my comment. I don't know why it can't, it can't be posted like today. Usually it's done on the Wednesday before the meeting, because, but I wasn't here. I was on vacation last week, too. And I did come in and spent all day here on Thursday. The meeting was the first thing I did Thursday oh, morning when I got I, here. I, and then, I'm not, I'm not, no, no, I'm just saying. But I, whatever, whatever you do, that, I, I'm just pointing out to you that there is an issue that could happen sometimes. And I, I know I got worried about it. Um, because I didn't see it when I looked at uh, Wednesday or Thursday. And then, yes, it was there eventually, and I went, whew. But maybe I'm the only one that's bugged by it. So yeah, I mean, it was up at the well, town. The town example, responded though, that it was. So we posted a month in advance in our newsletter. So you knew that it would have been last week, a month if we had looked at it. In which where we, newsletter? Well, in the, the uh, November senior section. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but this meeting was before, supposed to be on the 14th. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, and that's what we knew a month ago when that was published. So if we published it today, it might not be accurate uh, again. But we changed the meeting on the 14th before you left on vacation because you knew yeah. before that. No, I did. But I didn't know when it was going to be. And I, I bumped into Linda and she told me when, when it was going to be. So I was a, a little bit alert for it. I'm just pointing out, it seems that this is, let, this is an important step that is being let, somebody's procrastinating about it. And that's, I apologize for using that word because there's some other issues that you're dealing with and the, the agenda thing is one. But I, I, I know a couple of other committees of things I've been on, people just post, uh, uh, you know, a template kind of an agenda. And that's all the town clerk cares about. So, at any rate. Well, I will try to do better. Another procedural question. Um, so, if you have to, to post an agenda oh. with it, can you just do a generic agenda and just leave it at that? I can, but that's like doing the agenda twice. <laughs> so. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to Wendy we'll and figure something out. The, the, front, okay. the, front, the, the, the bogus agenda is just a placeholder, but it's, you, you, the law requires you to post something, so you post something. And, you know, I, I've done it with, you know, in other, other places in other towns, and you just put something out and you have a real Well, I, I, that's never been how I operate. But, but. I'm still doing it by legally, by having it so many hours a yeah, day. Yeah, so... Saturday counts, Sunday doesn't. So as long as that agenda is posted by 1 o'clock on Thursday, and usually it's posted Wednesday morning. Right. Yeah. But like I said, I was not in the area Wednesday, and I came in on Thursday because I had well, to do a bunch of stuff. Well, well so. mark my word, the next time it goofs up, I'm going to come at you. That's fine. I don't care. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> Nothing is at this At this sacred. point... <laughs> No, 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 it's not that. That's fine. I, I don't understand. You're... It's fine. We've been doing this for years. Okay, so I'm a new guy. Shut up, Phil. I'll, I'll give you another new guy. Shut up, Phil. Um, and that has to do with getting communications via email. That we never see an agenda or the minutes until we show up here. But 
1245 on. And my answer to that question is that when every member of the council has email, you will all get your agendas by email. Who doesn't have an email? I not it's not my to say, but I know there are some that do not. Do, and you, do you have access to the US Postal Service? I do. Can you put the, the that no. in, in the mail? No. Because if I mail those out to you on Wednesday morning, the chances of you actually having them by the Westboro Post Office by Monday at 1 o'clock, you're better off to come in here on Thursday or Friday and pick it up in person than you are. I mean, I had a woman who came in today. She lives in Framingham. She gets a newsletter. She didn't get her November newsletter till the 19th, mm -hmm. which aggravates me because it gets a first-class stamp on it. So it should go first-class mail. But my mother has the same. She, her, she gets hers in Milford. I think she got hers on the 12th or 13th. But it was a Saturday after. Yeah, it was the, the 12th. The logic is if there's, what, 10 people in this committee? <coughs> if eight of us have an email, why can't we get an email copy on Wednesday? Because you know who the two that don't have email on, so you don't bother. No, I mean, that's not why. Because I feel that everyone should get the information all at the same time. Not everybody gets it at different times. You know what I mean? Like different times. But if you want, I can put yours in the mail to you on Wednesday when I put it out for December. So I will put it in the mail on... In the mail. Just send it to me by email. December 7th. Okay. So the next meeting will be on Monday, December 12th at 1 o'clock. <laughs> we'll be here. I will be too. I am going to Florida in March and April, by the way. Just so you know, I'm leaving again the end of March into April. <laughs> Good for you. You deserve it. Motion to Yeah, well, no, I, oh, I, I, yeah. I love that. My kids are in I Paris right now. So. I second the motion to adjourn. I'd rather be there. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.